Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Moto Flight Guy here, and today we're gonna finish the teardown on the Thorpe T18 engine, so stay tuned. So, as you can see, I've already got two cylinders off the engine the other day. Main reason, I wanted to get my eyes on the camshaft, and as I suspected, the camshaft is unserviceable in this engine. Uh, I did take some footage of it, so I'll roll some of the clips right now, but it's hard to photograph the camshaft while it's inside this engine. So we're gonna go ahead and split these cases, and I'll show you guys what this corroded camshaft actually looks like. So I've got the engine all torn down, everything's laid out and kind of inventoried, so I'm going to show you guys what a light coming looks like after it hasn't run over 20 years, and also some of the stuff that we found that's going to need replaced as far as ADs and service bolt-ins go, so let's check it out. So first, obviously the biggest concern was the camshaft, and that was the reason that the engine got torn down in the first place, and uh, I'll show you guys kind of a closer up look here at the... The corrosion on the cam lobes, as you can see, um, it's pretty, pretty heavy. Sorry for the camera. It's it's really hard to um, get this to show up in here. So I'll probably cut in some still photos. But as you can see, the camshaft is deeply uh, pitted. I mean, it's just in horrible condition, and this is a big area of concern for Lycomings and that was initially the reason why I wanted to pull one of the cylinders off to get an eye on that and see if we were going to have to tear down the engine which of course we did. The next area of concern was this crankshaft and so there's an AD on these cranks. This is a Lycoming hollow crank but when you run a fixed pitch prop on them there is basically almost like a freeze plug that goes in here. I've, I've drilled it and, and pulled it out. Um, but because these original cranks didn't have any type of uh, plating or coating on, on them um, and there's a plug in there and since you're not getting enough oil flow up to the front of the crankshaft they're known to have corrosion and the deal is if you have corrosion inside this bore and you get some pitting on it now you've got a, a, a perfect scenario for a crack to develop so there's an 80 on that they want you to pull that plug out check to see if there's corrosion of course mine had corrosion and it had pitting so i will show some still photos of it because it's really difficult to to video 
um, down inside this bore but basically what happens is they give you a maximum ID that you can uh, bore that out to to remove the pits and uh, if you are unable to remove the pitting uh, by the time you machine that out to the maximum inside uh, diameter that Lycoming allows you to go to this crankshaft will be unserviceable so this is going to get sent to Chris at Airworks Aviation. I spoke with him the other day and he essentially just told me, look, I got to I got to basically get my hands on it and try and machine it and see if the pits will go away. So um, right now, this is a huge question mark. This is a very, very expensive piece of the engine. It's not something that I really had planned on having to replace. So it could be maybe a significant stall in the project if this crankshaft comes back red tag so everybody wish me luck that that uh, crank is going to be repairable the rest of it looks really good the journals are all in good shape and it's a standard crank it's not undersized journals they don't need ground um, it's beautiful 400 hours on that thing it's just unfortunate that it sat and it corroded on the inside bore so um, yeah wish me luck with that and the last thing as far as finding stuff in the engine there's an AD on these oil pumps, and as you can see, the gears are two different colors. On the left, we have an aluminum gear, which has been an AD on that. It's not allowed to be reused in an overhaul. Um, it actually goes back with two steel gears that are, um, one's nitrided and one is carburized. I can't remember, um, but they've updated that. They've obviously had some oil pump issues, so there's revised parts for that both of those gears will get replaced and bring that uh, oil pump up to the current standards. The cases, I'll probably clean those up in house and probably do my own die penetrant on those and just uh, reuse the cases as is. I don't think they need an overhaul. Um, they're low time. The journals all look in good shape and uh, I think I can check those for cracks myself uh, here in the hangar and save a little bit of money there. Uh, I don't really see any reason with 400 hours on those cases to overhaul them because they look pretty good the way they are. So I think we're just gonna roll with those the way they are. Same thing for the accessory case. We'll probably just clean this up, do a die penetrant here in house, uh, check, make sure it's not cracked. Um, other than that, I see no issues with the accessory case. Again, low time, uh, fairly low time on these parts don't really see a lot of need to go overhauling stuff that doesn't need overhauled. That goes for the cylinders as well. Uh, these were chrome cylinders and everything looks good. Uh, I have not measured them yet, but I've got a bore gauge, so I'll check them for taper and out around this. And as long as those things are in spec, we're gonna reuse those as well. Um, you know, you're talking six grand to top the engine, so I don't see, see the point in doing that. So there you guys have it, the teardown on the Lycoming that hasn't run in 20 years. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a few things. I know I certainly did. And at this point, I'm just going to have to get that crank sent off and wait to hear back from the machine shop. So as always, thank you guys for watching. If you want to follow the project, hit subscribe below and we'll see you guys on the next one.